The Alberta UCP government continues to fly off the rails, further by the day. This time it's Danielle Smith taking to her personal YouTube channel to share her outline for the Alberta Bill of Rights. It's all part of a larger plan to consolidate power and support within her base in order to survive what's likely to be an extremely contentious leadership review in November. But we'll come back to that later. Before we go any further here, we do need a bit of context. Alberta already has a Bill of Rights, but it's almost entirely decorative. It was brought forward in 2000, and it has some weird stuff in it. For starters, preamble's gonna make your toes curl. Whereas the free and democratic society existing in Alberta is founded on principles that acknowledge the supremacy of God and on principles fostered by tradition that honor and respect human rights and fundamental freedoms and the dignity and worth of the human person. So straight to the religious stuff right out of the gates, which will give you a strong sense of what this document is like, because it is very American and it is also mostly decorative. It's just for show. First off, the rights. The rights currently listed in the Alberta Bill of Rights are the right of the individual to liberty, security of the person, and enjoyment of property, and the right to not be deprived thereof except by due process of law. The right of the individual to equality before the law and protection of the law. Freedom of religion. Freedom of speech. Freedom of assembly and association. Freedom of the press. And the right of parents to make informed decisions respecting the education of their children. And that's the extent of it at present. So a couple of important things. First up, every single one of these currently covered by the existing Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Nothing that can be written at a provincial level supersedes that. So this is basically a loud declaration of rights that already exist, but in a format that much more closely resembles the American Bill of Rights. But worth noting, everything in here is kind of optional. In the law, it says, quote, every law of Alberta shall, unless it is expressly declared by an act of the legislature that it operates notwithstanding the Alberta Bill of Rights, be so construed and applied as to not abrogate, abridge, or infringe, or to authorize the abrogation, abridgment, or infringement of any of the rights or freedoms herein recognized and declared. What that means is if they bust out the notwithstanding clause, this whole thing could just be hand waved away. So there's really nothing protecting it here. They could just use the notwithstanding clause to get rid of this whenever they want. But Danielle Smith took to YouTube to announce her plans to add three new rights to the Alberta Bill of Rights. At least. It might be more, we don't know. And we don't know the specific wordings yet, I'll show you some possibilities later. But she specifically pointed to the right to refuse medical treatment without consent or something along those lines, specifically an anti-vax provision, that would prevent the government from mandating basically any sort of vaccination. It would also extend potentially to things like masking as well. Although worth noting, if they actually do add that to the Alberta Bill of Rights, it would make Danielle Smith's plan to do forced addiction treatments illegal. So it's very possible that she's going to have to use the notwithstanding clause to withhold a right immediately after granting that right. Danielle Smith also talked about the, quote, right of individuals to legally acquire, keep, and safely use firearms, which is concerningly wide-ranging. But it's important to note, provincial law cannot surpass federal law. Whatever provincial laws may or may not pass about firearms cannot go past federal law. Doesn't work like that, no matter how badly they want it to. The third proposal that she talked about was about property seizure, basically saying it's your right not to be deprived of your property without due process of law and fair compensation, which takes away the ability of the government to seize property. And there are some huge issues with this. Like, for starters, it would take away the ability to impound the vehicles of drunk drivers. Just as a start. But if you had organizations operating legally, they could potentially keep doing so for years without any seizure of their property while they dragged out the process. There are some serious risks to this. Daniel Smith doesn't seem to have a plan for any of them. And it's really unclear just how far this is going to go. At the UCP general meeting, they passed a list of rights, and it contains 21. This was signed off on by the UCB board, and we're going to go through them real quick, because I think you should hear them. This is the actual wording from the UCP draft policy, approved by the provincial board. Freedom of religion, belief, and conscience, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, freedom of speech, expression, and from private or public censorship in any form, freedom of parents to make decisions concerning the health, education, welfare, and upbringing of their children, freedom to keep and bear arms, including ownership and use of firearms, freedom to keep and own private property, including land, livestock, and chattels, freedom of mobility, including to enter, to remain, to move about, to leave, and to return to Alberta, freedom to remain silent under questioning, detention, arrest, or a trial, freedom to consult legal counsel and to be properly informed of such right, freedom to demand natural justice and procedural fairness in all criminal and civil matters and to demand compensation for denial or infringement of rights by a person, a corporation, or a government, freedom from arbitrary detention to be presumed innocent in criminal proceedings, to be provided with full crown disclosure and to be tried within a reasonable time, freedom to democratically elect and recall legislators by voting through secret paper ballots to be manually hand-counted, freedom to use sufficient force to defend person, family, home, and property from any and all occupation, theft, and destruction, freedom of informed consent and to make personal health decisions, including to refuse vaccinations, medical, or surgical procedures, freedom to peacefully assemble, associate, and protest, 
freedom from excessive taxation and from taxation without representation, freedom from discrimination, including upon the basis of diversity, inclusion, and equity, freedom of access to financial services, to goods and services, and to conduct commerce via bills of exchange, freedom to demand independent public inquiry into the conduct of legislatures, judges, and other government-appointed officials, and freedom to access government services and government information. So many of these are bonkers. For example, freedom from supervision and surveillance is wild. Like, does that mean security cameras are illegal? What if your front doorbell's got a ring on it? It also has a stand your ground right. Like the freedom to use sufficient force to defend a person's family, home, and property. What does that mean? People gonna start killing other people? Like if you go onto a farmer's property, will they have the right to shoot you? And how about freedom from discrimination? Including on the basis of diversity, equity, or inclusion. What does that mean? That is incredibly sweeping, incredibly concerning. Albertans should be terrified of this. The Alberta government's about to massively overhaul many of the fundamental laws of the land with no thought to how it'll impact the operations of the province, the government, the people, businesses, anything. And I want to be really clear here. I'm not automatically against the expansion of rights, but we need to be very careful about the implications of expanding rights and what that brings with it, especially at a provincial level. These aren't real rights. This isn't really how rights work in Canadian law. But when the expansion of rights is specifically designed to cater to the most extreme parts of her base, that should worry everybody. Because this is basically importing the American Bill of Rights with some extra stuff to cater to anti-vaxxers. And that brings us to the why. Danielle Smith has a leadership review coming up in November, and you may remember that her predecessor, Jason Kenney, didn't survive a leadership review. Well, he kind of did, but he survived it with a really narrow margin, so he had no mandate to govern and stepped down. Also, you may remember that he warned us that things were about to get much, much worse, and that he'd been holding the far more extreme wings of the party in check. And I never thought I'd say this, but Jason Kenney was right. Turns out he was the lesser of two evils. Who knew? So Danielle Smith's trying to gather support, in particular from the people who show up at the meetings. And that would be exactly the people who passed this Alberta Bill of Rights at the UCP AGM. She's just trying to sway votes, but she's also trying to restrict who can vote. Because it wouldn't be the UCP if it wasn't anti-democratic. You see, in the run-up to a leadership review, there are often a bunch of people who try to sign up for the party in order to get a vote. Many times because they're frustrated and they want a voice to push for a change in the leadership. And typically, parties just required you to be a member for a set amount of time in order to have a vote in the leadership review. Generally, party membership's quite open. You'll usually have to declare that you're not a member of any other parties, but that's usually about it. And for this leadership review, the UCP has actually started vetting applicants to become members. At least two prominent Albertans, Nate Pike from the Breakdown AB and Thomas Sukazik, the former deputy premier, both got rejected by the UCP as potential members. And it's entirely on the basis of just their political positions, their affiliations with the NDP. And they accused Thomas Lukasik of impropriety around phone bills that he'd been found innocent of like a decade ago. But that doesn't slow down the UCP. So Danielle Smith is overhauling the Alberta legal system in an attempt to shore up her base and restricting who can become a member of the party in order to protect her leadership. And real quick, I want to shout out Disordered YYC on Twitter, who is the absolute greatest at finding clips. In this case, it's Danielle Smith on a show discussing Jason Kenney's leadership review, where she seems to have a very different perspective. She seems pretty clearly in agreement with the speaker. Just watch. Danielle Smith's under serious threat as a leader, and she should be. She is a nightmare. She is so much more interested in culture war nonsense than she is in the business of helping Albertans, she has completely undermined her own cause. So if you're a UCP voter and watching this, which feels unlikely, remember, you have a chance to get rid of Danielle Smith. I literally cannot imagine a way you could do worse. Like, maybe the mayor of Gotham City. Maybe. Depends on the mayor. 